and then we'll go into my medical support of Mark Sisson's diet. So, I wrote this book along with my co-author, John Little. Um, it was done over the course of a couple of years, and it was done by cell phone and internet. We'd set up an appointment every week and I would talk for two hours. We would plan out what our chapter would be. He'd ask me questions, I'd answer them, and then we massaged it into the written word and turned it into a book. The book got picked up by McGraw-Hill. And one thing I've learned about publishers is publishers are good at two things. One is distribution. That is getting your book into the major bookstores and on Amazon. And the other is cover art. They're not great at marketing. That's all up to you. Um, but when this book came out, it had this subtitle underneath it, which said, a research-based program for strength training, bodybuilding, and complete fitness in 12 minutes a week. And at first I thought, well, that's kind of gimmicky and not exactly what I wanted to come across. But on further reflection, I came to realize it's exactly what I want to say, and it's exactly what the book says. They interpret it correctly, and they interpret it correctly for the general public to get the gist of it by just looking at the cover. So it's research-based. Everything that we say in the book, we don't want anyone to take on faith. We actually want it to be backed up by scientific literature. Now, up until probably as recently as five years ago, that would not have been possible because the people that were at the forefront of the high intensity exercise movement were pushing that forefront by their knowledge of basic science. Research is taking theories generated by an understanding of basic science and testing them. But we pushed the realm of basic science and pretty much scream from the mountaintops about it because of the results that we saw on an empiric basis. It was enough to generate a theorem. And then finally, people started picking it up and testing the theorems and enough data accumulated where we could actually produce a book where everything that we said in it could be footnoted and documented with peer-reviewed scientific literature. So that is one thing about the book. The middle portion says it's for strength training, bodybuilding, and complete fitness which sound like three separate things. And they're not. Because once you truly understand the essence of exercise, you will figure out that strength training and bodybuilding and complete fitness are all one and the same. That the only way that you can get at any metabolic segment of your body or any working organ of your body is by doing mechanical work with muscle. That is the foundation of exercise. Now, some people will do a protocol that's advocated in the book and get completely different results than another, because remember, it's not about us. It's about DNA, okay? So applying an identical protocol, the phenotype that you generate with this protocol will be completely different from you than the phenotype that a person with another genetic makeup is going to produce. A good example is Patrick, who put me through a workout this morning. He and I do an almost an identical workout, but the phenotypic expression, stand up, Patrick, so everyone see you. The phenotypic expression of that is completely different. He is. He's far leaner, that's for sure. Um, but he's long, lean, sinewy. I'm a little more blocky, carry a higher percentage of body fat. But the thing is, when you do proper exercise, whatever your genotype is, if you're doing proper exercise, you will get the best phenotypic expression for you, okay? It may not be what you have in mind for yourself, but I can guarantee you this, is that when someone of the opposite sex is making an assessment of you, the instantaneous thing that's going on on a subconscious level is an assessment of your health and robustness. And when you optimize whatever your best phenotypic expression is, even if you wished you looked like 
Mark Sisson or Patrick or fill in the blank. It doesn't matter because what you get is the best you possible and that's the one that's going to get your foot in the door for just about everything that you're looking for. So for some people, if you have a certain genetic expression and you're doing this protocol, you're going to become very, very strong, but you're not going to generate a lot of muscle mass. You're not going to be popping out all over the place. Well, there's a reason for that. There's a gene called interleukin-15. You get a copy from each parent. And the type of copy can be termed in either an insertion or a deletion. Okay? If you get two insertions of this gene, then you're going to be one of these guys that's big, muscular, all swole up, but you're not going to demonstrate as much strength in the gym. If you get a double deletion of this gene, both your parents were negative, so to speak, on this gene, then you're one of these guys that's extraordinarily strong, but doesn't get that big. And there's not a thing you can do about it, but you can be guaranteed of this, is whatever way it goes for you is the best way for you, because your genome has determined that for you ahead of time. So for some people, the strength training component of it is going to be bigger. For other people, so the bodybuilding component of it is going to be bigger. But for everyone, the complete fitness is going to be guaranteed. Because this protocol actually produces something that we term global metabolic conditioning. And when I flip this thing over later to take you through med school biochemistry course, we'll talk a little bit about that. But you will have complete fitness as a result of having done that. Now, Extraordinary claims require um, extraordinary truth, and you also have to be prepared to clear your mind of everything else that you've been told about fitness. Okay? And most of us have gotten our fitness knowledge through the media or through magazines. Okay? You look at the cover of Men's Fitness today, and you go back and look at the cover of Men's Fitness two years ago, and it's the same headlines and the same stories, rehashed over and over and over again. And we believe them. And we believe them because of a built-in, genetic, DNA-driven way of thinking that we have. Because one thing that you have to understand in your life, and if you can wrap your brain around this in your 20s, it will make all the difference in the rest of your life and you will progress in your life much, much faster. Um, and it's this. Our brains are not built for truth. Our brains are built for survival. Okay? So many times, rather than seeking actual cause-effect relationships, it's more efficacious for us to jump to a conclusion and do so quickly, okay? It is the reason why everyone seeks the investment advice of Warren Buffett. Um, it's because we think he has superior knowledge when in fact he has superior DNA for investing, okay? But the point is, is our brain is built to jump to conclusions. On a primitive level, we go out for a hunt. As we go out on the hunt, rabbit crosses the trail, we strike out, we don't get anything. Next hunt, we're going to sacrifice a rabbit before we go out. I mean, it's very simplistic thinking, but I'm going to give you an example of it that I hear all the time. Is my wife has always been a swimmer, loves to swim, and sometimes, you know, I'll go hang out at the Olympic pool where she swims and watch the kids while she does it. And I hear people's conversations and they say, I've taken up swimming because I want the long, lean body of a swimmer. Okay? Because the assumption is, is the activity has produced the phenotype or the body type, not that the body type has selected a particular activity. Okay? And if you want to prove it to yourself, go to a collegiate swim meet and sit through the whole day of qualifying. 
And what you'll notice is at the beginning of the day when you're at the uh, one eighth and quarter finals, you'll look up on the starting blocks and you'll see a great variety in body types up there. But as you progress through the day, what you'll see is that the swimmers start to look more and more similar. They start to look more and more like the prototypical swimmer, long, lean, morphinoid, um, sort of smooth. By the time you get to the finals, it looks almost as if there are a row of clones sitting up on the starting blocks. Because what's happened is competition is simply accelerated evolution. And you have people that have already been pre-selected by their phenotype to do well in that sport. And then through the selective pressure of competition, you found that ideal body type. But you get some schmuck like me that goes and swims and thinks I'm going to get the long, lean body of the swimmer. It's not going to happen. Okay, your phenotype is your phenotype. But we tend to make these mistakes. And those mistakes of observations are called heuristics. Heuristics is our way of thinking that allows us to survive. During hunter-gatherer times when we were out in the wild, we didn't have time to deliberate truth versus not truth. We needed to make quick decisions in life and death circumstances. So we parsed out a more effective way of doing that. And in so doing, we made ourselves easy to exploit. Right now, there are hundreds of thousands of women that are doing yoga because Madonna does yoga. How many of your girlfriends are doing Pilates? There you go. And it's all because you can take this heuristic mistake in thinking and exploit it. And you can make people think that if they do what this person does, then you're going to have that. I don't know if you guys are even old enough to remember Ty Bo and Billy Banks, yeah. And now it's P90X, get ripped in 90 days. But they take these models and they put them up there as representative of what the protocol has produced. And it's not going to be true for you. But if you do a proper protocol, you will become the best you that you can be. Now, the other thing that you're going to run into that you're going to have to clear your mind of in the process of embracing a new and better way of getting the best body that you can have is the industry's linking of health and fitness and making you think that they're one and the same and that as fitness rises, health tracks along with it and vice versa. And it's not true. Okay. Um, first, when they linked health and fitness, they never defined their terms. So in our book, we are going to define our terms. So in terms of health, what health is, in my definition, is number one, a lack of disease. As an emergency physician, I see a lot of diseased people, and I can tell you that is absolutely a prerequisite for being healthy, is the absence of disease. 